makes this piano so amazing? What makes this piano so amazing? This piano, I'll show you, is a world-class standard in digital pianos. World-class. World-class. This is one of the finest you can buy. It's made by Yamaha. It is uh, a part of their N series. Um, it has a very extensive sound system in it of amplifiers and speakers. The piano keyboard itself is actually a real grand piano mechanism. If you can get a side shot here, you'll see the wooden keys no kidding. with the weights in them. So this is exactly what a real grand piano feels like when you sit down and play it. So I'm going to do something here really quickly. How does this compare to say a Bosendorfer, like, you know, the highest of high ends? So a Bosendorfer probably at this point is $200,000 plus. A Steinway probably starts at about $150,000. So digital recording has come a long way in a long period of time and 35 years ago I would have killed for an instrument that made one piano sound that I could take with me and play on stage. This piano retails for about $25,000. Really? And it has several piano sounds in it and it has a real piano, grand piano keyboard. So it's not like playing plastic keys or something at Walmart. So, for example, now that's a very what they would term a Viennese style piano. It has kind of a dark tone to it. I can go here and I can change that to the next piano sound, which will be a little brighter. I'll play the first one. Here's the second one. It has a little different tonal quality. So it would be. So, so those are two piano s sounds that are in there. Here's a third one, which is like an electric sound. Oh, did I not do that right? Piano one, piano two. The manual must be pretty thick for this thing, right? Uh, here's the second piano sound. It's much brighter than the first one was, right? And Way then, brighter. And then, well, different, different style. And here's an electric. piano sound is also included. Oh, that's totally cool. That's a, like a Rhodes piano, a Fender Rhodes piano from back in the 60s that everybody used to use, right? Ah. We're back in time. The doors. Okay. And there's only one other sound in this piano, which is... A harpsichord. Huh. So, this has five sounds on it. What makes it a professional grade piano is the grade of the sound system, the speakers, the amplifiers, all of that, and the real wooden action grand piano keyboard itself. The, the whole mechanism on the pivot, and the, the, it's exactly the same. Conversely, you can purchase digital pianos which don't have as an extensive of the keyboard itself, but it may have a hundred sounds on it. So you can play violins and horns and all kinds of different things and automatic playback. But this is specific for like the home professional version of a piano when you don't want to have a piano that you have to have 10 feet of space for and tune all the time, this never needs to be tuned. Never. Never. 
And how would it compare to a Bosendorfer? Um, well, one of the reasons, well, one of the reasons this piano was selected, and we have a second digital grand piano, which is more of a spinet style, but it has the same sounds in it, and it has a similar kind of keyboard, and we use that for the portable piano for the other dining rooms. It's also part of the N series, but it's smaller and less expensive. Um, when they were talking about redoing the pianos in Clubhouse 2, and they said, well, we could sell the Steinway we have and we could replace it with something else, and the people that do the pianos say they could put a package together, and that's when I said, excuse me, <laughs> um, you really need to look at electric pianos here. And, they, and people said, well, but does it sound like a piano? And I said, I wouldn't be standing before you recommending that you look at these electronic digital pianos if they weren't absolutely identical in their performance standard. When I was at UCSD in the 70s, Cecil Lida was the big, the big piano uh, guru. And he got a Bosendorfer or was going to quit and go to another university. And they had to keep it in some sort of box at the perfect temperature yes. so it would stay in tune. They're, those are generally, you know, professional grade instruments that are either in uh, concert halls or recording studios. Frank Sinat, uh, I'm sorry, Frank Zappa had a Bosendorfer, which I got to play in the 1980s really? in his studio up in L.A. And you know, it's temperature controlled, humidity controlled, all the time because they're very expensive instruments. So, would would a trained musician know the difference if he heard you on a Bosendorfer and this piano? Would he know the difference hearing it? I would say it would be a fraction of a percent of people who could tell the difference, even professionals. Because That's... a piano varies from, you can play, you can line up the same model of piano one after another in a warehouse, and each one will have its own character. Mm -hmm. So we've got, for the money, the best piano money can buy. In this genre of digital piano, yes. And how long will this piano last? Forever. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, literally 100 years, no problem? As long as none of the electronics burn up. Okay. How happy are you playing this piano? Uh, well, I have a few of my own at home, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty normal for me. But it, 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 we're really fortunate to have it. And it was, it, it was a lot less expensive than what a new grand piano would have been. New grand pianos, even in a six-foot range, are probably going to start at fifty to $60,000. So less than half the money, and we don't have to spend money getting it tuned up. And we didn't pay $25,000 for it either. Even better. Even better. Because I used to work in the industry, so I know what the markups are. So I was able to shop the piano for GRF and get both of these pianos for less than the price of this. Sweet. Yeah.